And now it's time for the theater of the deranged mind. Here's recasting with Christian Slater. salutations and welcome to another abomination of good taste in your overall senses known as recasting with christian slater this week we'll be revisiting scenes from a horror flick that was originally panned by horror fans at first but slowly gained a cold following sorry but it's not halloween 3 season of the witch everyone's favorite pussy hound dr chalice will have to be lampooned at a later date The film I'm referring to is Friday the 13th, Part 5, A New Beginning. On that note, let's introduce our celebrity readers, shall we? Playing the role of Ethel, the thorn in the side of the Unger Institute of Mental Health, his attorney is evil overlord Skeletor. Great to have you back. (laughs) Yes, it is good to have me back, isn't it? AOTKP could never do this show without me. You do realize you failed every time to capture Caskill Grayskull, right? Gee, thanks, Dick. Playing the role of Ethel's dim-witted son, Junior, is everyone's favorite moose, Bullwinkle. I've got a feeling this role won't be too much of a stretch, Bullsy. Why, thank you, Christian. I consider it to be an honor to be a reoccurring guest on your show. Like I said, it's not going to be a stretch. (laughs) Pulling double duty of the sheriff and the drifter is our resident curmudgeon, Don Knotts. How you doing, you old bastard? Oh, real fucking funny, asshole. (laughs) It's bad enough I got to be here, stuck here with you all week. But now I got to do, read bit parts in a movie about a dead beat dad who kills his, kills a bunch of kids because his irritating fat shit son got hacked to death over a candy bar. (laughs) Wow. You should have done the voiceovers for the trailer. (laughs) (laughs) On that note, let's get going. Excuse me. Exterior, driveway, day. Sheriff Tucker converses with Matt in the driveway as two giggling teens shimmy past them. The conversation is interrupted when a sputter of a dirt bike engine approaches. Driving the motorcycle is Junior Hubbard, a large, barrel-trested, dirty young man with a leather flight cap. Behind him, with her arms clutched around his waist, is Ethel, equally dirty, petite, with curly hair. She is clad in fandal and has what appears to be a permanent scowl. The bike skids to a stop by the sheriff's car. Ethel climbs off the bike and jabs a finger at Junior. I'm going to do the talking. You just keep quiet. Ethel Ethel stomps toward Sheriff Tucker. Matt and the group of kids sports shit-eating grins. Morning, Ethel. My, don't you look lovely today. Horse shit. Now, Sheriff, you better hear me and you hear me good. I want this loony bin closed down. You hear me, fella? Now, these kids ain't nothing but trouble. They don't respect others' property, and they're all crazy. You tell them, (laughs) ma! Ethel pivots and scowls at Junior. Ethel, these kids weren't doing... Doing? Ethel swats the sheriff in the arm. You don't think I don't know what those two perverts were doing in my yard? 
The kids begin to snicker. Say it like you mean it, ma! Ethel pivots again and snarls at Junior. Would you shut the fuck up? <laughs> All the kids laugh while Junior merely shrugs. Ethel points a finger at the group of kids. Now I'm going to tell all of you. You make my, you mark my words. The next little bastard that comes near my farms, I'm going to blow your fucking brains out. You hear me? Sheriff Tucker reaches out to calm Ethel down. She recoils instantly. Don't you come near me, Sheriff. I warn you. I got a bomb on me. I swear to you. You make one move towards me, and I'll blow us all up. Start the engines, Junior. Junior starts his dirt bike and revs the motor as Ethel climbs aboard. That's my final word. Ethel flips the sheriff the bird and the group of kids, and, the, and Junior tears off down the driveway. In our next scene, we revisit Ju Ethel and Junior at dinner time. Interior, kitchen, day, a meat cleaver slams down on the neck of a plucked chicken as, the, as, the, as it rests on the chopping block. Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm going to chop you into itty bitty pieces, my friend. Just like they did to that pig -o over there at that fucking crazy farm. He <laughs> Ethel slams the cleaver down again, con continuing to butcher the chicken. He -ya! <laughs> Nearby, Junior slams down a wooden spoon on a kitchen table, mimicking his mother. Beef stew drools from his chin. Soggy vegetables are sla splattered on the table. Junior is a slob. Ethel drops her hands to her side and manages a smile. You big dildo, eat your fucking slop. <laughs> Ain't I make the best goddamn stew in the whole wide world? Junior shovels more food towards his face. Half goes into his mouth, half into his lap. This is the best goddamn stew in the whole wide world, mama. <laughs> Outside, chickens cluck and scutter, scutter about. This grabs Ethel's attention, and she grabs a shotgun near the counter. It's that goddamn coyote gonna try and kill my lot again. I'm gonna show that bastard once and for all. You hear me, Junior? Junior continues to slurp his stew as Ethel stalks toward the door with the shotgun. When, he, when she reaches the door, she startles a skinny drifter, haggard and dirty. Ethel is not pleased to see him. She points the shotgun in his face. Holy shit! Who the fuck are you and what the fuck do you want? Ma'am, I ain't eating in two days. I'd like to earn a meal. Yeah? What do you do? Whatever you need done. Okay, clean the shit out of the chicken coop and dump it behind the shed. You come back here when you got all this shit out, and then I'll fill your stomach. Yes, ma'am. The drifter nods and walks off. Ethel flashes a look of disgust as she lowers the shotgun and scurries back to the kitchen. She leans the shotgun on the kitchen counter. That is one fucking ugly man that goes there. That is one fucking ugly man, mama. <laughs> Ethel spins and confronts her son, hands clenched in rage. Would you shut your trap? You know, you ain't so pretty yourself, you know. Uh, I ain't so pretty myself, uh, I know. <laughs> Junior shrugs, chuckles, and commences eating his stew. Ethel grimaces in anger and stomps towards her chopping block and grabs the cleaver. She slams it down on the chicken again. He ya! This concludes another episode of Recasting with Christian Slater, where there truly are no new beginnings, because auditory torture never ends. See you next time. <laughs>